Hello, and welcome to another teaching from 2536. Today we're going to look at the difference between godly love and worldly love. Let's begin by taking a look at the definition of love given to us in Webster's Dictionary. Webster's Dictionary defines love this way, an intense feeling of deep affection, a great interest or pleasure in something, a feeling of deep romantic or sexual attachment. In order to get a good understanding of what this type of love looks like, we need only hang around the toy department at Walmart. It usually doesn't take long before we'll see a parent having to pry a toy from a child's hand and drag them away kicking and screaming. Now there's little doubt that the child loves and honors their parents most of the time and are only distracted by their love for the toy which shows us how easily worldly love can change or be manipulated. Now the reason for this is because worldly love is internally focused. It's emotional, temporary, ever-changing, selfish, and easily manipulated. Because our love is internally focused and fueled by our selfish nature, we'll often hear a message of how we're to love God from the pulpit in an effort to keep us focused on the Father and not on all the other stuff we love. Some will even try to manipulate our love by entertaining us with passionate sermons about the Father's promises and prosperity. They use the promises of the Father as an incentive or encouragement. It's the what's in it for me that fuels our selfish nature. This is what we see with the child at Walmart. Their love for the toy was, at least for the moment, stronger than their love for their parent. This distraction caused them not to obey their parent when they asked, to the point where the parent had to get their attention another way, through discipline. Sadly, we're much the same way with our Heavenly Father. When we're compelled to leave our sin, far too often our love for our sin is greater than our love for the Father. So He has to get our attention another way, through discipline. The reason for this is simple. Like any good Father, our Heavenly Father wants to instill His character within us. And like our earthly Father, our Heavenly Father does this through His instructions. But because our hearts are so internally focused, we remain unable to produce godly love. For even when we do follow the Father's instructions, we do it for selfish gain. This is why the Father gives us a new heart, one that's able to produce godly love. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Ezekiel chapter 36 verses 26 and 27. The heart we receive is the heart of Christ and it's through His heart and His Spirit we're able to die to our selfish desires so that Christ is able to express godly love in us and through us. For godly love is the opposite of worldly love. Godly love is externally focused, without emotion. It's permanent, unchanging, unselfish, and it can't be manipulated. But this type of love can only come through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Those who are born again are given the heart and spirit of Christ which transforms our emotional, abstract, worldly love into physical, concrete, godly love. To be born again is to die to our selfish, worldly love and to love in a new way that benefits others. Our love is no longer aimed at Christ, but through Christ. In other words, instead of focusing our love internally by trying to hold on to Christ, our love is focused outwardly by sharing Christ with everyone we meet through an outpouring of godly action, just as the Father does towards us. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whomever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. John chapter 3, verse 16. Could you imagine if godly love were like our worldly love, and the Father just felt good about His creation but did nothing to help it? Just as the Father's love is known to us through His actions, our love to Him and others will also be expressed through godly action. This is why the Apostle James said, In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. James chapter 2, verse 17. James said, If our love for the Father hasn't moved us to action, then our faith is dead, meaning it's of no use in overcoming our selfish desires, which is why Christ said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. John chapter 14, verse 15. Those who have been born again will be filled with godly love, a love that causes them to die to their love of the world in order to love God and others. It's through our hunger to fulfill the law, which is to love God and others, that we die. We're put to death by the ungodly, just as Christ was. 
But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. Romans chapter 8, verse 10. It's in this way the law kills us. But even though we die, we live because the Spirit of Christ lives in us and gives us life. For a more comprehensive understanding of what it means to walk in the Spirit and Truth, get a copy of our new book, Learning to Walk in Spirit and Truth, a commentary of John's Gospel. It's available at Amazon Books and it's free to read on Kindle. Thank you and may you be blessed in your pursuit of truth. Shalom.